this is an example of something that is similar to an MC Escher style tessellation where a single piece gets repeated, but it fits perfectly as it gets repeated every single time. And there's different ways to do this, but when you're doing something that's perfect like this, that is the style of MC Escher, you have to actually start with an abstract shape and turn that abstract shape into something. So let me show you the MC Escher way first. I was starting a new one here that was a little bit more um, organic, but I'm gonna start this one from scratch. So there's a couple of things in this technique, which are some nice little options in Photoshop. So the way I go about creating the MC Escher pattern is I go to file and I create a new file that's a perfect square. So you wanna create a perfect square. It doesn't really matter the size that you start out with, but the thing is you're going to start with a small size that's a perfect square, and then you're going to multiply that later on in this process because you're going to need more space with this MC Escher technique. So I create a uh, perfect square and I usually give it a little bit higher resolution than 72. So 800 by 800 and 150 is good. And I hit okay. So this is the beginnings. And so the C, a grid, you have guides. So you can um, create a ruler in Photoshop by hitting command R, control R, and then pulling out a guide. So you have all these you know, guides to work with if you ever need them. But there's a new ability here under view. So if you go to view, you can create a guide by clicking on new guide and specifically saying, I want that guide at a specific position. So if I know this canvas is 800 by 800 pixels, I can say, oh, I want one vertically at 400 pixels like that. So I can have it perfectly in the center. And there's this new guide layout function where you can go into new guide layout. And I already have it set, but you can pick um, columns and rows. And it, by default, I think it has this gutter turned on. So you just want to have a multiplier within the number in rows. So if I say two by two, it's going to create perfect guides that are splitting everything into a perfect four square grid. So for this though, I want to have a three um, by three grid. So I'll get nine squares out of that. So new guide layout is part of this technique. So new guide layout is what you want to use. So once you do that too, you can save it as a preset if you want. So you can, I think I saved one called grid here earlier at three by three. So you can save these presets. So I'm going to hit okay. So this is going to be where I start. And then to do this um, MC Escher technique, what you do is you draw in the central square and you utilize the central square as your initial shape to guide what you're going to make for this. So the thing about the central square is you want to make sure that you have this set as a selection. And you also want to make sure that you have something called snap the guides turned on. So snap the guides will basically ensure that anytime you make like a marquee selection with the marquee tool, that it's perfectly um, snapped to those guides. Otherwise it might slip and you might not get a perfect selection there. So I always have to double check to make sure that snap the guides is turned on. So if you go to view, it's right here and I can see it's not turned on. So I'm going to turn that on. It's also the shortcut shift command or shift control semicolon. So it's probably good to remember that semicolon because what's going to happen is you're going to have to turn it on and off a lot. You're turning it on to make perfect square selections like this. So now I have a perfect square with that select. And then what I usually do is I create a new layer and then I immediately create a mask. So now I have a perfect square in the center here. And I can always go back and command click on that perfect square and always bring back that selection. So that's like your initial area here to always bring back because you're going to have to use this center square a couple times before you actually create the tessellation. So if I have it as a mask, it's a great way to save it in there. So the next part is to create some shapes inside the central square. And I turn off the selection to do this because I want to be a little bit looser when I create this. But I also have to turn off the snap the guide. So this is where you have to turn it off. If I don't turn it off and I use my brush tool and I draw here and what I want to do actually too is create a new layer. So I'm going to create a new layer. And if I start to draw, what happens is the uh, brush stroke will snap to the guide and you'll get these like straight jaggy lines that you don't want. So what I do is I make sure I turn off snap the guides. And then when I draw, I can draw something kind of just free without having to worry about snapping to something. So the way this MC Escher technique works is the, if you ever look at MC Escher tessellations, like the creatures and the people are really just these abstract 
kind of shapes in the tessellation. They're not like perfect drawn shapes. So there'll be like some abstraction of, a, of an animal. And it always starts with an abstract shape. So the way this works is you're gonna pick a side of the square and you're gonna draw something only on one side. So something simple, something like that, like a simple shape. You can start simple and then maybe get a little bit more creative with these shapes as you go on, but it's good to start simple first. So you pick one side to draw one shape and then you pick another side to draw something else. You got two shapes. So that's the start of this. And then what you would do is fill these with black. So I just use the um, magic wand tool, um, select the outside. So I'm selecting the outside and then I use uh, invert selection. So you can use shift command or shift control I, invert it and then fill it with black. So these are my two initial shapes that are, are going to make up this tessellation. And this is going to become something. And then the next thing I want to do is these shapes are drawn on a transparent background. So you're going to be inverting the shapes to get a um, sequence of black and white shapes that kind of alternate. That's part of the op optical effect. So I want to make sure I have a white background. Right now, there's not a white background on that layer where I drew the shapes. So what I do is I create another new layer. I just throw it underneath the shapes. I command click on the, the mask that has the square that I created earlier. And then I fill that with white. So now I have a white box beneath the shapes. And then I select the two, the shapes and the white box. I shift select both layers and then I hit command or control E. And now they're um, together. I still have the selection. So what I want to do is I want to cut the, the parts of the shapes that are going beyond the white box that I just created. So I invert that selection again. So shift command or shift control I, and then I just delete. So now I have this initial setup right here. This is going to be the basis of some sort of character or creature that's going to become tessellation. So to make this um, happen, I have to duplicate this. I have to duplicate it two times because I want to create a bigger organic shape out of this. And to do this, I want to make sure I have snap turned back on. So I'm going to go back and turn it back on. And then I use command J or control J to create three duplicates. So I have one, two, three layers that are the same thing. But I grab one of these layers, the second layer, let's say, and I'm going to shift drag it up, and it should snap in perfectly. That's why I want to have snap turned back on. And I'm going to drag the other one and shift snap it to the, so now I have this kind of setup. So you have the shapes repeated. I go to the first one though, and I want to invert it, the colors here. So you can go to image adjustments, invert, or hit command I. So now I have the inversion. So I have what was white is now black. And then you go to the two layers that you drag over to the top and to the left, and you rotate them. You rotate one clockwise, and you rotate the other one clock, counterclockwise. So I'm going to go to the one on top. I'm going to hit command T or control T on, on a PC, right click, and I'm going to rotate that counterclockwise. So now that little piece is up there. And then I'm going to go to the piece on the right, command T or control T for that, and then rotate that one clockwise. So now I have this kind of shape in here like this. So I have a shape in here. And so this part in the middle is going to be the part that tessellates. And then what you can do is you can make a selection out of that and repeat that. And it's going to fit perfectly on all four sides as it repeats. So you're going to have a perfect tessellation. And that's basically the MC Escher style tessellation. So the three layers that I have here are going to become the basis for this. What I like to do is keep these layers just as a back, but I will group them. So I'll do a command G or control G group them. I will duplicate the group. So command J on the group turn off the uh, first group and then um, hit command E on that group to group them all together. So now it's one layer and I'll turn off the guides to see what I have here. And then I'm going to use the magic wand tool. And I just want the center piece. I don't need the black sections that are on the top to the left. So I just want this center piece. So I'll click the magic wand tool on that. And then I have a selection there. I'm just that center black piece and I hit, hit command J and that brings it to the top. So I don't need all the um, extra pieces. So I'm going to turn off that layer. So this is going to be the thing that I repeat. And if you look at it, you can see how it's a little hard to figure out at first, but you'll see once I rotate these pieces around, every single piece is going to fit together perfectly. 
because you basically took a square, you cut out two sections, you stuck the two sections on different sides of the square. So it has the same exact surface area of the initial square, right? Like the surface area hasn't changed. You have all the same exact information. But then what I look at though, I look at the, and this is where you think about maybe ahead of time, how you come up with your shapes. I try to figure out what do I see in this? So I might come back with my brush tool and on top of this, figure out like, what do I see? Maybe I see, or maybe I see something. So I, it's always some sort of face. Maybe it's some sort of asterisk or something, you know? So I just add like some details, something in here, some sort of details in, you know, so that's what I have, right? So you start to add these little details, right? So the silhouette now becomes something. Now what I can do is I can duplicate this. I can go back and I look at my guides and I have my guides here, but I can take this layer now. And what I usually do too is sometimes it's helpful to invert it as I do this. So I'm going to hit command J, make a duplicate, hit command I, invert it. And then this is where you have to look at it and eventually you'll figure out where to drag this. But if I take this now and uh, rotate it, so hit command T, rotate it like this, I can see that piece goes there. So that's one of the pieces. And then I can command J on that piece. Sometimes you have to nudge it with sometimes too, like it's not perfect. So using your arrow keys on your keyboard, you can nudge things a pixel here and there. Now I'm going to hit command J on that one and drag this up here. And sometimes I just have to think about, oh, where did these fit initially? So that one goes there. So you have to think about it a little bit as you do this to really think about how to fit them back together. It doesn't, sometimes it doesn't really seem logical at first. And the other part of it too, is as you start to do this, you'll re realize you'll need more space. Like you might not have an, enough space to pile these together. And that's what you're doing. You're taking them and you're tiling them together. So what I, what I will do is make the canvas bigger at this stage. So I will go into image, go into canvas size. And I'd like to look at pixels because I started with pixels. So I select pixels and I usually multiply it by three. So if I have 800 pixels, I'll multiply it by three to, to make it 2,400 by 2,400. The little box down below, that dot at the center is gonna radiate the new canvas outwards. So when you add to the width and height and you uh, click on this dot in the center, it's at the center by default, uses that as where you're going to radiate out. Cause you can start at a corner or a side as well, but you wanna radiate out from the center to give yourself more room. So I'm gonna add uh, 24 by 24. Now I got more space to do this. So you can see it, like the ear is over here. So I have enough space there. So I'm going to go into the, the initial face I created and duplicate that one and then transform that. And I can see now how this is fitting together. So now I can see my tessellation here. And once you have this initial setup where you can see that happening, then you can group together your initial pattern, your initial tess tessellation pattern. So I have four here, so I can select those command G and group them. And now I can duplicate the groups by, by hitting command J and then shift dragging those out. And then it just speeds up the process. So you want to get it big enough because after you get it big enough, you're going to define the pattern or you're going to use the library with that extract function again to create a, a pattern preset. So you can duplicate this and reuse this um, pattern again and again. But this is basically the um, MC Escher way of doing this. So you start with something that is abstract, and then you add to the abstract shape after you create the, the initial uh, square, right? So you're not, you may not know what you're doing in the beginning until you start to look at the shape and then you'll see something in the shape. So I'm gonna create another, tile this out even further. So I'm gonna, this time you don't have to hit Command J all the time. You can hit Option, Shift and drag it out. So you can do this. So that kind of snaps in there. And then once I got three groups, I can select all the groups and I can command G or control G on the group and drag those out, drag this out, and then keep on grouping the groups. So group that group, three groups together. I have to sometimes zoom out too. I might zoom out a little bit. Too. And so I'm just repeatedly duplicating the groups and grouping the groups just to make the process faster. And one thing that's interesting too, if I look at the size here, it started at, in the lower left-hand corner. This is pushing out the canvas. You can't see all the pixels. But if you look in the lower left-hand corner where I'm hovering over my cursor, it started at 16 megabytes and now it's at 
1.3 gigabytes. That's how big the file has gotten. So the size of the file accumulates quickly when you start to duplicate and start to do this type of thing too. Because if you look at your layers as well, I got layers, you know, within layers. And I'm going to do this one last time, drag it down. So I'm really pushing. Um, so that is the MC Escher style. And so what I like to do, once I get this set up with the final tessellation, it's always better if you, like when you're looking at it straight on, you can see the, kind of see the grid, but if you rotate it, it goes away. What I will do is create a new layer. So I'm creating a new empty layer and I use shift option, command E or on the PC it's shift alt control E and that will take everything and flatten it in one layer. So it's flattened in one layer. If you want, you can rotate that, so you, can, you know, rotate that usually like 45 degrees is fine. So that's fine. The other thing you can do is now that I have it set, I can go into this extract in the library. So I click on the little plus sign. I go into extract from image. It's going to you know, bring up the library. I pick the grid example and I just keep it at one. There's no reason to change it. You keep it at one. You don't need to rotate it here. You save it. But if you, and then what you can do is it's here set it as a library pattern. And so if I double click on that, it appears here. And then here I can scale it up and then rotate it and adjust it in here. If you scale it up too much, it's going to probably pixelate a little bit so you can keep it small. So that will save the pattern for you. So you can scale it up that way and adjust it that way. So I can go in here, rotate it, and then I can reuse this. Oops, rotate it here like 75 seeing a line in that so i see a line here maybe the like a pixel off so that's it's actually a little bit off at the edges too i think that possibly with this one thing to think about is from left to it cuts off a little bit so you to get like a perfect repeating pattern you'd have to really think about what you might have to do actually is um, i have to figure out where get that perfect pattern so I think um, if I make a selection here and then I go into define pattern and then I create a new layer, just fill the whole layer with white and do a uh, fill. And I'm gonna keep everything here set to one. Yeah. That, that should be good. Using define pattern is better because I think with the capture pattern, you don't get that perfect pattern. So but now it's perfect. So instead of using capture, you can also, and instead of just filling a layer, you can go into your adjustment layers and create a pattern adjustment layer. So if you go into FX and then I'll do this in a, a blank layer, I'll create a empty layer. I'll go into FX, I'll go into pattern overlay and I'll pick that pattern. Here you can scale it and adjust it and rotate. Yeah, so that's good. So yeah, here you can adjust it. And so that way too, this pattern overlay is non-destructive. There should be, I thought there was a, oh, there's pattern here as well. So if you go into this adjustment layer and, and click pattern here, it's going to do the same thing. It's just going to give you uh, different controls. So the two are actually doing the same thing. So that's the MC Escher way of creating a uh, perfect pattern.